Okay, now once I had all of my scrappy log cabin blocks made, I decided instead of just laying them out in a quilt side by side, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So what I decided to do is make four six and a half inch blocks out of each one of these. So I had 12 of these, so that means I would have 48 uh, six and a half inch blocks and I'm putting them together with sashing and cornerstones in between. So let me show you how I did that. I just, um, as you can see, I just put a crease in the middle of it right there. So then I'll just go ahead and trim that, or cut it in half, I should say. So I'm just gonna cut it down the middle, lengthwise. Now, I have two halves. Now I'm going to cut those into halves one more time. And what I'm lining up is this middle section. I'm trying to make sure that it is in the exact spot that it needs to be in. Not too worried about this down here as long as I have six and a half inches. So I will measure that and see if I have six and a half inches if I put that right in the middle. And I do, I have plenty of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that. And then do the same thing to this. Remember I'm lining up this middle uh, log right here. So that it's the same on both sides. Now it's okay that I have but those ends are not even because that's going to be trimmed off. I only need six and a half inches of that. But I am going to go ahead and press it so I don't have to measure anything. And then I'll just lay my ruler on that crease. Slice it down the middle. Oops, missed a little bit there. Oh, it's just a thread. And as you can see, I have about the same amount of the middle log, which is what I was wanting. Do that again. And there's the others. Now these all have to be squared up to six and a half inches. For that, I'm going to use my little Stripology ruler, my small one. And I will I will put my blue line on the bottom and I'm lining it up on the side where my middle log was. The zero line will be on the middle log and on the bottom of the block. And then I need my other cutter. And I'll just come over here to six and a half. And then I'm going to turn it, keeping this one where the keeping this um, middle log on the blue line. Now you don't have to have this ruler to do this. Just make sure you lay it the edge of your ruler right here on this blue uh, right here on the middle uh, log. Now I'll come back to six and a half again. So there we have that one. And we'll do that three more times.
All right. So what I have now is I have two that are mostly dark. And I have two that are mostly light. Dark ones going vertically, the strips going vertically. And then I wanted to put a light next to the dark. So I put the lights this way and this way. Now I did not put any sashing in between these four blocks but I did put sashing around the outside with cornerstones which helped to make my quilt large enough and when I'm talking in past tense it's because I got I kind of got carried away I kind of got carried away and forgot to film when I was putting the rest of this together and so I decided I better make one more block and show you how I did that. So let me show you the quilt. So here is the quilt, but it's not quite big enough. I'm not finished putting borders on yet. But there are 48 uh, six and a half inch blocks in this quilt. And I'm still working on putting borders. I've also got cornerstones and sashings around all of these uh, blocks that I made out of the six and a half inch blocks. So I'm still putting borders on. I have, uh, I've gotten a brown border and now I'm putting this little uh, sort of green with uh, brown little details, little leaves in it, and the little dragonflies. All of my little sashing uh, cornerstones are the little dragonflies fabric, and then I'm putting this one on. I have to put the last of my second inner border on this quilt top, and I still need about another. 10 inches on each side of this to make it as big as I would like to have it. So I'm going to have to figure out something else. I had one other. This was going to be my outer border. I think, yeah. Which is the same as the sashings on the inside. But I'm still going to need something else because I wanted it to be a certain size. So, I'm gonna have to figure out something else to go before this, I think. I don't know, let me put this border on then we'll check it out and see how much we like. Now, I think uh, I will wait to iron or press the borders until I get them all on and then I'll press them all at one time because I'll have to go to the longer ironing board for that. So I'll just kind of finger press or hand press until I get to that point. But 
as you can see, the little um, dragonfly and leaf greenish uh, fabric in the in this uh, little border and my little cornerstones, and sometimes in in those pieces, kind of brings a little bit of a cohesiveness to my scrappy quilt. And I don't know if you saw this before or not. There's my scrap pile that I've been pulling out of. Now granted, there are a few uh, strips in there, but they are cut from leftover pieces, like backings and things like that. So when I say I'm making a scrap quilt, I don't mean that I'm using a jelly roll or a layer cake or a charm pack. There's nothing wrong with those. They're beautiful coordinating fabrics. But I have these big piles of scraps that I need to use up somehow and not just throw them out. So when I say I'm making a scrappy quilt, I'm making a scrappy quilt. And here is that um, one that I made, the block that I made. It's a 12 and a half inch block and I made it from four six and a half inch um, pieces, blocks that I cut out of that larger uh, unit. And I thought that just gave it a little bit more interest than just lining up the log cabin blocks. I thought that would be pretty cute. And I, I really like the way it turned out. Especially once I get the, uh, the um, cornerstones and, and the sashing around it. So, so I've got that. I'm not sure exactly what I'll use it for. I might make some more. As you can see, I still have plenty of scraps, don't I? So let me uh, figure out what I want to do next on this and I'll be back and show you. So when I'm making a scrappy throw quilt, I know how approximately how wide and how long I want it to be. And I will cut my backing to that um, size. And usually what I do is I'll take uh, two yards of a fabric and then I'll take two more yards and I'll sew them horizontally together and that becomes my backing and then I will cut my uh, batting to fit that and then I'll put it on my long arm and this is my scrappy star quilt that I'm working on here and it's taking me a while because I'm doing some a uh, little bit of custom quilting on that so um, but anyway what I'm thinking about doing here because I need about another eight inches or so on each side of this to make it the size I want it to be. I've got two small inner borders. So the next thing I'm thinking is I will take this scrappy strip here. This is a three and a half, I believe. And I will put it next to the green, the dragonflies. And then I think I will take this other little dark one. It's a different one than that one. It's darker than that. But there's some of it in my quilt. And then I will... I think I have enough of these fabrics. I'll put a dark one there. A narrow dark. And then I'll take my light strip which is the same as my sashings and I'll put it on the other side of that and it doesn't have to be quite as big as this star one under it because that one was kind of a big quilt for for a uh, throw quilt but this is going to be a lot of little borders some small ones and some larger ones but I think that will work Think that's what I'm going to do. So I will get started on those and then I'll give you an update.
Okay, here is that uh, light brown border. All done. Now I only have the narrow dark brown and then the off-white with the little leaves in it like this one, like the sashing to have this quilt top finished. So I will keep working at that. Okay, I have one more strip border to go on here. That's one, two, three, four. I have one more. The one that matches the sashing will go on the outside. Now normally I would not put this many little borders, strip borders, on a quilt. But since this whole quilt is strip pieced with uh, the log cabin blocks, with the exception of the little cornerstones, I think it really will complement uh, the quilt to have these on there. And of course, I've got to press all of this. So I have one more to go. Okay, I'll go give this a press and then I'll be back and show it to you. Thanks so much for joining me again. I'm Nancy with Simply Quilting, and I will be back when I get a backing picked out for this. Thanks for joining me again. This is Nancy from Simply Quilting, signing off.